All right. Well, I, I, um, I paid for this party, so I kind of got a, a seat at the table <laughs> twice. <laughs> but um, right now, we're going to share the stage, and I'm very excited about this topic, because I'm sure we've all heard magic happening with ChatGPT, Google Bard. We're all getting hyped up, right? Mm -hmm. We've seen this movie before with other things, such as Web3, NFTs, crypto. And uh, we are this big right now and kind of questioning, okay, but what's really next? And what are some of the real applications, especially in product? So I'm here with three product executives that are going to give us their, their take, the real take. We have a pretty sophisticated audience here, so we can go deep just to make sure that this is, this is for real. Um, as, as you know, I'm the founder and CEO of Product School, and I would love for maybe the rest of the audience to, the rest of the panelists to introduce themselves and add one more thing, which is from one to five, how excited, if you had a crystal ball here, what do you think is going to happen with AI? One being, ha, it's just another trend, it will fade out. Five is like, oh my God, this is happening. It's a paradigm shift. So maybe you, um, Jessica? Hi, everyone. I'm Jess Hall. I'm the Chief Product Officer of Just Eat Takeaway. Um, great to be here today. I'm definitely at the top end of the scale. I'm going to go for a five. I think it's super exciting. Yiwe. Uh, my name is Yiwe, Chief Product Officer at Talabad and part of Delivery Hero. Very similar sentiments. Over the last two or three months, been diving deep into the space. I'm a, I'm a solid five as well. Shibayu? Yep. My name is Shibayu, and uh, I'm the Vice President for Product and Growth and Tier. And I would go for a six. Oh, oh wow. How nice. doing us all. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, let's, let's ask the audience. Uh, let's start with the optimist. Please raise your hand if you are a five plus. All right. Maybe 50%. Four. Not bad. Three. Still decent. OK. Pessimist, where are you? Number two, still some. One, who thinks this is just a trend that is not going anywhere? Okay, I see some. Hopefully we can change your mind during this conversation. Um, so let's start, go, go, go to the nitty gritty of it. So maybe you guys could share a real use case for AI. Maybe you are already applying in your current company or that you see could also be applied for other companies in product management. I mean, for me, it's less about the specific use case, but just the absolutely exponential pace of change in technology that we're going to see as a result of, um, of AI becoming more and more used. And I think right now we're still learning what those opportunities could be. Uh, and I think that's exciting. It's the scale of the opportunity, which is amazing. Um, where we are focusing in Just Eat Takeaway is on really um, providing training and opportunities to engage on this subject because we want to be more efficient as a business, we want to find those opportunities, but we also really want to upskill the people in our teams um, so that they understand and that they can make the most out of this technology. Um, and we want to make sure that we're developing our talent for the future. So um, for me, it's really about the scale of the opportunity. And I, I just think that the change over the next five years is going to be immense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very similar sentiment. Uh, at Talabad and Deliver Hero, you know, we operate in a very complex world. You know, we serve our riders, our customers, our restaurants. And what's really amazing, and, and, and for me, what distinguishes a technology that's just a bit of a hype and a real technology is how quickly you can start prototyping and testing and implementing new technologies to, to see if it actually makes the lives of your customers better. And what's been really exciting over the last couple of months is that we've been testing. We've been trying a bunch of different things. And you know, whether it's using ChatGPT or a bunch of other technologies, we've tried things like, what would it look like if we helped restaurants, made it easier for them to market their products? What if we made it easier for them to write a menu description uh, using some of these AI tech? And you know, very quickly already, you know, we've been able to sort of take things to market, right? And that, for me, is the exciting part about AI. Not too long ago, it was a bit of a scary topic, right? I remember, you know, we would have you know our data science team try and explain the concept of a neural network and how it all works, and there was a small fraction of people who sort of understood it. But now it feels tangible. It feels usable. It feels like you know we can jump in there and actually see what it can do. We can run tests behind it. And I think that, that feeling of realness is what I'm the most excited about and, and giving this a shot over the next couple of years. 
Yeah, for me, uh, it's about like chat GPT is everywhere, right? So basically, it's about text analysis and uh, how we kind of enable growth. Uh, people are mostly looking at it from a marketing perspective. I would like to see more in the deep learning space, uh, the CNN in particular, where we are working on geospatial um, uh, imaging. And in the medical field, uh, imagine the power of AI that could uh, you know, pave ways for cancer treatment, right? Uh, we are so fixated on the text base, but we, I think there's a lot of scope there. Um, I'm all, all a believer being a part of tier and sustainability for good, and I, I hope that this field catches up pretty soon. So, so you were at Amazon before, right? Yes. And they have a big yeah. team that works on this technology. <laughs> we're facing now the classic buy versus build with AI. There are models out there that can be implemented already, ChatGPT being one of them, but they will see engineering teams really working on their own proprietary systems. Um, so maybe starting with you, what do you think are some of the common misunderstandings in AI for product? Where really the, what is the opportunity versus the fluff? Yeah, so I think one of the things as product leaders is uh, we get scared like a general public. We get very scared with the term AI because it's kind of a black box, right? So I think first uh, to uh, Eva's point, like be bold, right? Dive, jump, in, I mean, dive into it and understand, and then you'll probably realize that it's not that scary. Um, most of the AI development happens from a solution-led first, rather than a problem space-led first. And then we try to fit in the, which problems does this solution fit into, right? As a product leader, I would like to have mechanisms and ways of working to manage that problem. And I think in, in Amazon, we really nailed it. Uh, there are uh, AI PMs, tech PMs, who know exactly how to kind of do that. Um, I would like to also see large-scale implementations of it. Um, I think I would also add there that like some of the misconceptions um, uh, around this are that it is this miracle thing, and maybe that's why some of you don't want to go with the five score. It is imperfect because it's trained on the data sets that we're giving it, and it's trained on information from society. So I think one of the other really important parts of the product role is to be aware of that and to be taking action to correct for those biases that are in the data sets that are in society today. Because the speed at which we will advance with AI um, means that if we're not cognizant of that and we're not making decisions about that, um, that there's potential for those things to become even more embedded. Um, and I think all of us as product um, managers, as product leaders, have a duty to make sure that we are really thinking about that as we develop products with AI. So just to follow up on what you just said, yes, um, I see a lot of startups now throwing the magic buzzword, I said, <laughs> right? Back in the day, it was like, we do machine learning. Now they are like, we do AI. They are kind of throwing AI to whatever they do. And even their domain is .ai instead of .com. Yeah. <laughs> so fr from your perspective, <coughs> what are some of the real hmm. wins that some of the companies can leverage today to start showing value? Uh, real value for, for these AI applications? I mean, I think it very much depends on the business and the, con you know, the customers that you're interacting with. Um, the first place that I'm really thinking about is um, that, you know, I guess there's like a bit of a fear, isn't there, that AI is going to replace jobs. And I don't think that's the case. I think it's something that we've got to learn to work with. And I think... Um, you know, AI allows us to scale our cognitive abilities. So I'm quite excited about how we can um, use it to improve, you know, like technical tasks that involve human interaction today and remove that and allow for like more purposeful, exciting work for people. Like that for me is the beginning and the understanding. I think there's loads of applications in customer service, um, in providing great... Um, uh, testing and other elements that help us really like learn quickly, learn quicker than we do today. You know, imagine if you could use AI to run um, experimentation at like way faster pace than what we can do uh, with customer testing now that might take us two or three weeks or longer. Um, so that's where I'm really looking for the value in the beginning. And I think it's going to grow from, the, from there. 
I think um, it's, it's very important for almost every function in an organization to stick their finger in there and see what it can do, right? Between a finance team, between a customer service team, between a sales team, a marketing <coughs> team to write copy. I think it's a real opportunity for all the different teams to sort of figure it out. And I think over the next couple of years, you'll see a verticalization of a lot of the technologies. Um, I think you'll see some successes, some failures, uh, some companies making some you know, very funny errors along the way, but that's, that's really you know, part of what breaks Making edge technology looks like. Yeah, I think for me, at the risk of probably repeating myself, but what I'm really passionate about is uh, when we are always trying to monetize AI, we are always trying to optimize the funnel, right, for AI, and that's fine, um, though I call it greed. <laughs> but <laughs> but at the same time, we never thought of ourselves as customer, as product people, right? How does AI enable us? And I think that's power, mm. right? Uh, and I think we should kind of, that's why we should embrace the technology and do that. Uh, I make sure that, you know, our team spends most of the AI into discovering the problem space and not moving into the solution. So kind of one of my principles is if all the AIs are deployed customer facing, then there's something wrong going on. Mm -hmm. I remember 12, 13 years ago, when I was a computer science student, I had a subject on AI mm. before it was cool. <clears throat> and that was horrible. It was literally all about, you know, coding and trying to apply some intelligence to a video game. And now it's, it's cool. <laughs> mm. And I, to your point, Yiwei, around sticking the finger on like, each team and see how they can leverage AI today. And, and hopefully there are ways to do it in a non-so-technical way. So I, I'm curious from, from your experience, like for product teams, mm. How can some of the product folks in the room who might be thinking, okay, do I, how do I learn AI? Do I need to code? Are there any other ways for me to kind of experiment with it without mm. breaking the system too much? Like, how, what, what's your take on that? You know, actually, uh, I mean, you were just discussing the importance of, of re-educating your, your, your team and your workforce, and I think we're on that journey. You know, and I think the beautiful part about it right now is how accessible the technology feels. ChatGPT for its highs and lows and pros and cons makes it really easy for you to boot it up, throw some prompts in, throw some commands in, and see, and, and see the potential of what it can spit out, right? And so, you know, funnily enough, as product people, I don't know how many of you guys have tried to actually use it in your day-to-day -day jobs, but, you know, when I walk down the hall, I see product managers with ChatGPT open and, you know, may or may not be writing their user stories and PRDs using, using ChatGPT. <laughs> yeah. But, I, I mean, I, I, I legitimately think that by testing it on our own, we'll be able to, to see the potential, right? And, you know, not in the not-so-distant future, I'm sure there's going to be a customer customer service rep who also thinks, hey, I can uh, make my job a lot easier if I throw in a customer query into this thing and, sees what, and, and see what happens, right? So I think a lot of that sort of skunk works, bottoms up initiative uh, needs to happen and, 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 and organically because of the accessibility of the technology, we're seeing that already. I, I completely agree. I mean, ChatGPT is the, the one that everyone's talking about, but like, I'm talking to people in my life including my dentist recently, who <laughs> was telling me about all of the tools that she's found, and she sent me a list of things that um, she'd found that were helping her with her website. You know, this is, these are people who are not computer scientists or even product managers who are really getting in and experimenting with this um, technology. It has become so accessible um, that actually it's in the hands of our customers um, and I'm a big, big proponent for uh, getting close to your customer um, and, and getting different perspectives on things. So um, in compared to other advances in technology in the past, I think um, this is so different because it is really in the hands of everybody and it doesn't take um, a, a great deal of specialist skill to start to interact with it and even go beyond just prompts in ChatGPT to, you know, there's all sorts of Google Sheets that you can download that will, you know, write you a talk or not that I wrote mine. <laughs> um, or do your SEO for you or, you know, whatever. So, um, and I think that's really exciting too. <laughs> I, I think that's probably one of the misunderstandings today because it feels rushed but suddenly because ChatGPT released their public version Surprise, surprise, week later, Google releases their own AI bar, right? And, uh, and now a bunch of people are talking about AI as if they had to because it's, mm. it's hot. 
However, we know from experience that there are a lot of companies have been working on this type of technologies for a long time, and that is emer starting to emerge. So for those teams who might not have the resources to invest in AI from scratch today, they don't want to hire AI engineers or AI PMs, um, have you seen any specific APIs or tools that would allow these companies to start showing the, the value without over-investing? Yeah, I mean, uh, there are so many open source uh, AIs, uh, available tools, especially like Google. When you, when you Google up, you can uh, find a lot of geospatial information uh, about a particular uh, location of a customer. If somebody is using a mobile phone, you have a GPS location. You can have access to ab about that location instantly just through API plugins, right? And then there are so many platforms that enable you to uh, plug in APIs like hell, like million APIs, right? I don't want to name the companies. But then those are the smart decisions as product managers we need to kind of, or as product leaders we need to take. But there are so many. And even Amazon, Google, most of them, they are all about open source APIs. So, yeah. And if I were to make a bet, in the next five years, we will see a massive rise of, of, of companies that are able to make this very easy and accessible and verticalized. So you want, you know, you want to dig into locations, there's probably a company that will have a verticalized version of, of this that solves for that problem. You want, you, know, uh, you, you want a solution that solves for customer service and, and make sure that people respond in half the time and 2x the quality, there will be a service for that. You want one that helps you detect for fraud, there will be a service for that. I think the next five to 10 years we'll see a remarkable rise of wow. just AI technology being massively accessible that uh, I think uh, you know, there's a good chunk of this room that will somehow end up in, in some of these product roles in a not so distant future. I've seen this movie with uh, product tools before and, and it became a commodity. Mm. Now we don't have to reinvent the wheel to be a roadmap or a data analysis. So I agree with your perspective, hopefully it gets to a point that we don't have to talk about AI because it's so embedded into yes. our products that it's, it's just a, a default. Um, for the other two, what are your predictions in, for the next, I would say, five years? So one, AI is just, so like, as we said, last two decades, just so much happened. And what you're seeing, chat GPT, et cetera, is an outcome of it, right? But don't forget the series that um, the Sorry, I'm all about Amazon now. So uh, the, the Siri in Apple, right? So they, those are also ones which came. So every 10 years you would see, but I would expect product as a service where you would embrace, um, to, to EY's point, to all the APIs and all the instant plugins to instantly understand the customer will become so easy. And then that will enable small cross-functional teams, a two pizza team to unlock extreme potential. That's, that's the space I'm looking out for. I mean, I agree with um, everything that's been said so far. I think we will interact with AI every day in five years' time. Um, and the key skill we will have needed to, to develop, or the, the key skill we are developing, is uh, how we interact with it, how we use it. There are tools already out there, like Copilot. Um, you know, I think we're going to see more of that. And, and to touch on your earlier point, I think um, we, don't, we, we need to start thinking about AI as just part of everything we do and not a specialist subject, not a, um, a skill that sits to the side that we sometimes bring in. Um, if we're really going to um, you know, achieve the, the maximum potential from it, we need to be thinking about it in all of our products and all of our discovery and all of the different applications. Like you said, it's not just about customer facing, it's also about how we operate internally and you know, what we can learn that way. I, I love what you said about AI as a service, comparing this with software as a service. Mm. Hopefully it becomes that type of understanding for, for builders. Um, in, the, in the few minutes that we have left, I want to use this opportunity to talk to the people that gave us a one or two in terms of their <laughs> uh, optimism here. What if it doesn't work? Like we've seen movies where it talked about virtual reality. It was going to change the world and it's still unclear. Uh, we saw NFTs not so long ago. We saw blockchain uh, not so long ago. And now it seems like we're throwing a new term out there called AI. 
Mm. So, what is the worst case scenario? What if this doesn't work out? I mean, what is the worst case scenario? If it doesn't work out, we're going to move on to the next thing, right? But the difference for me here is how accessible this is compared to blockchain, for example, which, you know, the general public, let's, you know, people who don't work in, in tech, you know, struggle to understand or really had to work hard to understand. Right now, we're talking about a website that literally anyone can navigate to and put in a prompt and get an answer. Um, and they don't have to go very far to find, you know, uh, uh, learnings on how to get, make that better. And I think that, that's the crucial difference here. And I think that's what makes it different from some of the examples that you, you've given. And I think one beautiful thing about the solutions that we're seeing today is that it's complementing work that we're already doing today. It's not a new frontier. It's not a new way of it's, it, it. It actually just solves a lot of the problems that we're currently having today. I think that's very powerful. Um, so uh, I think for those who maybe give a one and a two, my observation as well sometimes is that, I mean, chat GPT today says some pretty silly things, you know, make some mistakes. And we've seen public demos from really big tech companies that didn't quite work out. But I think that's all part of the, the learning process. And, and you know, uh, as we hone things in, as some of these, you know, uh, these models are able to fact check themselves and, 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 and it will just come in a matter, I believe, of months. Um, I think we'll see a much higher bar of quality of products that will come out. Yeah, for me, it's like it will not work out if we go on, like we will replace everybody. AI will do everything. It will definitely kind of not work out in the next five to 10 years at least, right? Uh, but what will work out is if we have realistic practical goals, right, of uh, leveraging AI to their strength and leveraging humans to their strength. Our strength is our connection. Our strength is building culture. Our strength is the vision, right? I don't know if that's a strength for AI. Uh, so we play to our strengths. AI strength is processing large database. And if we learn to coexist, to me, it's a win-win. Thank you all for sharing your, your thoughts, the good, the bad, and the ugly on, on AI. Please, let's give it up for Jessica, Yiwei, and Subayu. <laughs> <laughs>